Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video all about research. And today we're going to be talking about four different ways you can apply for research funding, whether that be a PhD, a master's, or any type of research project. So let's get into it. Before I go any further, if you are new to the channel, I talk about research, life, health, and all things to do with just that. So if you do want to stay tuned, do subscribe if you can do. Click that post notification bell so you don't miss out future videos because I'll be doing three videos a week now so stay tuned however four ways to do research funding number one is actually what we call fully funded research now this can happen through research councils it can happen through charities it can happen through industry now whether you're looking into going into what we call quantitative research so a lot of you can say laboratory work a lot of samples and resources and equipment and techniques a lot of high-end research generally gets funded through this what we call fully funded approach. Now if you extrapolate this towards looking for a PhD, most PhDs as you can say higher end universities have what we call fully funded PhDs sometimes from external bodies. So for example a colleague of mine um, got a PhD in the British Heart Foundation and you may see on Instagram, on social media, you may see in the papers that a lot of um, PhD students and even master students are being funded by a charity, for example, Wellcome Trust, or an industry, you can say, within the drug discovery world. You've got, you know, GSK, you've got Sigma, you've got Thermo Fisher. Sometimes a lot of these other companies, Pfizer, even fund research. And, and generally, that type of research is well-funded, so you get a lot of money if you're applying for a postdoc position, a PhD, and even a master's project. Um, that fully funded is probably one of the best approaches to use if you can do so. One other thing to bear in mind that if you are a student and you're looking into going into research, having a externally funded project that is funding for you is really really big on your academic CV because as you progress, uh, interviewers look like, oh wow, you have a funded project from this uh, place or from that place or from this council or that charity. And especially if it's from an industry partner, it's more well received you can say if that's a better way to look at it. so just to recap on this part if you're looking into going into research for fully funded kind of approaches then we've got research councils charities and industry partners so definitely do check them out some of the ones that i know about in my kind of research space i've put in links in the description box below so do check them out and again if you want to have any questions feel free to contact me on instagram amir.phd and i'll be more than happy to assist you if you want to do research via this approach. But what about other ways of funding? Now again to keep the theme of looking into funding research for a PhD, a master's or any other type of project, you can look at what we call internal funding where the university that you may be applying for have pockets of money that they allocate towards different research projects within the different faculties that academics start to apply for and compete to win grant bids from the university essentially. Uh, and this is the approach that many academics use to kind of advertise their PhD projects, master's projects. Many of the people who go into master's by research or PhDs sometimes generally find a scholarship through an internal funding from a university. So if you are an undergraduate and you're looking into going into research, definitely contact some of the academics that you are um, interested in doing research with and they'll be able to advise that if there are call-ups or call-outs of um, funds of research coming in, that you may be able to work with said academic to apply for funding to fund your master's, PhD, and, and, and even more. And for those who are looking to finishing your PhD, um, there is also postdocs um, available internally as well, where some, although very rare, it's more for master's and PhD, but sometimes there are, you could say, call-outs for money, not specifically for a postdoc, but may be able to fund a, a particular research project that you may be able to apply for. So internal funding is the second way to look at research funding. One thing just to add on that particular topic is that if you are a university student, you will may, you may get notified a lot earlier about call-outs about internal funding. And the key thing to bear in mind is that sometimes university advertise offers or discounts and you can say subsidized scholarships if you're looking into doing a master's and sometimes, not always, uh, for a PhD. So there is sometimes that added benefit in terms of cost-wise if you're looking to go into research to do that at the university you're already in. 
However, there are pros to go out to different universities, different networks, different research centers to broaden your horizons. It is entirely up to you. Now, the third way, and by far the one I genuinely hate the most, and I use that word particularly because this type of funding is what we call a fee waiver scholarship. So, the type of funding where, especially if you're looking into going into a taught type of research, so a master's or PhD of some degree, and you're not doing like a postdoc or an independent project, sometimes some universities, which I know in the UK, uh, waive the cost to do a PhD but they don't pay you to do the PhD. And same with the masters, they may waive the cost um, to, do a P to do a masters, but they won't pay you. And I know most masters are not paid. However, this notion of a fee waiver scholarship, whatever avenue you're looking into, is what I call a research trap. Reason why is that they may waive the cost to do a PhD, and in my opinion, it shouldn't be a cost to do a PhD, uh, because you're contributing a lot back to university already. And you are then under contract by that university to finish said project in three or four years. But you don't get paid to do it, so you have to work elsewhere. And it makes life a lot difficult because you have to adhere to the same deadlines somebody who has a fully funded project has. So it's kind of like an unfair advantage already. Now, those of you who may be uh, following my channel for some time know I had this sort of scholarship when I did my PhD. Now, if, you if you're new, if you haven't heard about this, there's a video on my channel, it's one of the main ones, called My PhD Journey. Do check it out because you'll see an authentic depiction of what can happen when you have this sort of scholarship. So if you are a university student, a master's student, looking into going into research in the form of doing a PhD, I strongly, from my experience unfortunately, advise against doing something where there's a waiver of PhD fees, but there is no stipend. The reason why I think this is a, a double bad combination is that you're under contract, so as I mentioned before, you have to finish at a certain time, otherwise you get penalised and you get charged. The other thing that's problem is that you have less time to do the research. Now believe me, those who are doing any form of research, whether it's quantitative, qualitative, you're in the field, you're in the lab, you're with, with patients or you're with participants, it's not always going to be a 9 to 5 thing where you can just relax and then go on the weekend. It may be for a period of time, but things do get a lot more difficult. And I've had contacts with students for the past six, seven years. And there's only been maybe one or two who've been able to keep research there and have some sort of a decent work-life balance. I'm not saying that it goes out the window. However, keep in mind that Doing a fully funded PhD already is difficult, time-wise. Doing it then when you're not paid and you have to work elsewhere, and especially if you're going to look at moving to a different city, that is nearly impossible because there is not enough time for you to work enough to pay for your rent and everything else. I was thankful to live at home, so the whole rent cost wasn't there, so it allowed me to look at this scholarship. But looking back, I'm glad I was able to do what I've done. However, I would not advise anybody to do a fee waiver scholarship. And the third, fourth one which I want to go into is probably a better approach long term. But I'll go into that now. The last one is actually you fund the research. Now it is technically a form of research funding and the reason why I wanted to talk about it is I had colleagues when I was doing my PhD who kind of self-funded their research and the reason why there is pros and cons to it which I think you should look into is that you're not then pressured to some degree by the university because you're not under contract, they're not paying for anything, right? So you may have some deadlines to adhere to, of course, but you'll have the peace of mind to be slightly more relaxed. However, you have to pay for it. And research for whether for a master's or a PhD, it's not cheap, it's not easy, and you eventually have to pay back, like you must have done for a student loan uh, when you did your undergraduate. Now, you, the banks do allow for um, what we call research roles, sorry, research loans, or um, you can say teaching kind of loans or um, academic kind of loans. So all of these kind of terminologies are loans that are specific to either studying or researching, going back to university or for secondary, etc. So I think the interest rates may be slightly less or something like that. But do check them out if you are interested in doing research and you've not been able to apply for or fully funded or have not been successful, your university don't have what I call the research trap scholarship, then you may want to look at this as an option. Now if you were to ask me 
between the fees only scholarship and so the one where they pay your fees but no stipend versus you paying it all together I would as though, although I hate it I would probably look at the fees only scholarship and the only reason why is that the cost impact even though there shouldn't be a fee to pay to do a PhD or masters at least that is covered however I would only do that if you have a good decent part-time income that can help to support you and I would only do that if um, you were living in the same city that you're going to do the university um, a degree with. Now back to this self-funded thing, I will only do this if you have um, a good amount of savings. I would probably advise this for people later on in their life who may have worked in industry or, or in whatever job for a long period of time, who may have enough savings and then they can maybe invest in themselves if they wanted to do a PhD for whatever reason. So those are the kind of four different ways you can apply for research funding. But my advice going forwards, if you are looking into going into research, is don't make the mistake that I did about rushing into things. It is all well and good you waiting an extra year. If you don't, if you're not successful for a round of PhDs, you can work. You can do some work experience, work part time for a year, get some training under your belt, and exposure to other types of research, and then reapply. Uh, because the great thing about PhDs is not tied into the particular academic calendar of undergraduate where you have to start in September, October and you finish in May. There are call outs to start your PhD in January, March, um, August, you know, even October. So there will always be rounds to apply for research funding, even, especially even for masters as well. People do apply for it earlier, um, not just this one time point for an undergraduate, which is September and October only. So. If you're not successful uh, for whatever reason, again, don't think that, right, I've got to grab any scholarship I can because I want to start now. You know, um, I, although hindsight is a beautiful thing, I'm very grateful for everything that I went through in my PhD and the research funding opportunity that I went through. However, I could have either waited a year and applied for a fully funded scholarship, which meant I could have, you know, done, done more research. I could have been able to publish the papers that I wanted to and not face the difficulties that I had, but that's you can say that with anything, right? So ifs and buts are always going to be there. However, I hope this little summary gives you the insight as to which um, avenue you want to explore. And more importantly, if you've got um, questions, you've got queries, do hesitate to comment, comments in the comment section below. And if you want to have a chat with me on Instagram, Ahmed.phd, or if you want to email me, Amir at toresearchtribe.org, more than happy to answer your queries. And I hope I can help you and assist you in your kind of decision making process for applying for research funding for whatever avenue, whether it's a master's, a PhD, or even a postdoc. But in any case, that's today's episode concluded. But I want to see you in a few days' time on Sunday for another installment of me talking on YouTube. Take care.